let's turn this raw file into this image using time blending in Photoshop. As always, you can follow along by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of this video. And now let's begin. So what is time blending? Here we have a raw file of a sunset. The sky looks pretty good, but the city in the foreground is rather dark. And that's where we use a second image shot during nighttime with all the city lights on. We're going to edit both of these raw files and later combine them in Photoshop. That means first we want to do the raw adjustments. So let's go through them real quick. I want to start with the nighttime image, going to the profile and changing it to Adobe Landscape. Just bringing up the base saturation a little bit and now let's expand the basic panel. For this scene, all I want to focus on are those city lights. So first off, I want to make them a little warmer by bringing up the temperature. I just think it looks better this way. At the same time, I do want to bring down the tint slightly, but that's about it. Next, you can already see some of those highlights are quite overexposed. Unfortunately, I cannot fix that because I messed up the exposure here, but we can tweak it a little bit by bringing down the highlights all the way. This does look a bit better than before at least. Now I also want to bring up the contrast and I want to bring up the shadows just a bit, hoping to restore some details around the lights as well. And then let's bring up the whites for a little more contrast. And finally, I'm raising the blacks. Compared to before, the city lights do look much better. We can actually kind of see through those windows at this point, which is exactly what we want. I do want to make them just a little bit sharper by bringing up the texture. And I also do want to add some glow coming off of those windows by bringing down the clarity. And I'm also going to bring down the dehaze for that effect. Perfect, that's looking really good already. I do want to bring up the vibrance so we get some more saturation in here. But that's about it for the basic adjustments. So since we're just focusing on those city lights, we don't really need any masking for this shot. So let's continue with a bit of color grading. I'm going to start in the color mixer for that. Here I want to play around with the hue, adjusting the color of the lights a little bit. What that means is I want to bring up the yellow hue just to introduce more colors in that scene right there at the bottom. That's especially visible right here in this area. I also want to play around with the orange hue, bringing it slightly down and making those highlights warmer. Perfect. Then let's switch over to the saturation tab and here I just want to bring down the yellow saturation notch just to not be overwhelmed by all those warm color tones. But that's about it. And finally, we can apply a little bit of split toning as well in the color grading tab. Since with the highlights, we are just affecting the city lights, we want to keep it warm. So choose a hue somewhere in the orange range and bring up the saturation. This looks really, really good. So we can tweak the midtones and shadows as well if we want. For this scene, colder midtones do make sense. So I want to set up a cold hue somewhere around here and bring up the saturation. And let's do the same for the shadows and bring up the saturation. Done. So that's our nighttime image with which we mainly focus on those city lights. We went from this to this and you can see the main part does look way more interesting. So we set up the first raw image. Let's continue by working on the sunset image. Here we want to focus a little more on the overall look of the image. So I want to start this again by changing the profile, going to Adobe Landscape just for more saturation. Then let's expand the basic tab. Overall, the image is a little bit too dark. So to fix that, I'm going to bring up the exposure and I'm going to bring down the highlights because I want to prevent overexposure in here. And I also want to bring up the shadows, which really helps to bring out details in the darkest parts, especially in the foreground. For the same effect, we can bring up the blacks. And I think that's about it for now with the exposure adjustments. Again, I do want to bring up the texture, making everything slightly sharper. And I want to bring down the clarity to give the overall image a softer look. 
And then let's raise the vibrance to further increase the saturation of this scene. Wonderful. I do think I need to adjust the white balance a little bit, making the scene warmer. So let's bring up the temperature a notch. And I also want to bring up the tint to introduce those warmer sunset colors. Perfect. So with the basic adjustments out of the way, let's do a bit of masking as well. That should be done quite easily. So what I want to do first is to create a radial gradient covering that thin bright spot in the sky like this. And what I want to do here is to introduce some more blacks, which will give us a very nice glow effect. I'm also going to drop the dehaze in here to further improve this glow effect. Due to those adjustments, we are losing color in this region. I don't want this to happen, so I'm going to counter that problem by clicking on that color box and setting up a specific color in here. Of course, I'm aiming for something warm and make it really saturated. Wonderful. I'm going to create another radial gradient right away on top of the first one, just like that, covering the brightest parts like this. And again, I want to bring up the blacks, stacking some more glow on top of it. And I'm also going to bring down the dehaze. That looks really, really good. We could maybe even bring down the clarity to make this exact spot even softer like this. All right, that's nice. Then I want to create a linear gradient targeting the top right part of the sky like this. In here, I want to bring up the contrast just making the sky a little more interesting this way. And I'm also going to increase the clarity to give the clouds more detail. Perfect. Then let's try to make the foreground a little brighter. I am going to use the linear gradient for that, just covering most of the image like that. And I'm going to bring up the exposure, tickling out some details in the foreground. And I think I want to use the radial gradient and just cover the city like this. And again, bring up the exposure just to have some more detail in here. That looks really, really good. Okay. So just to get an idea, we went from this without any masks to this, which looks so much better already. But now let's also do a bit of color grading for this shot. In this case, I want to skip the color mix and go straight for the split toning. Again, I'm starting with the highlights and we want, of course, to have some warm colors in here again. So I'm setting up the hue and I'm going to push the saturation all the way up because I really like this effect on the sky. And then let's head into the midtones. And for the nighttime shot, I was using a cold color tone. This time, however, since we're working with this sunset shot, I want to use a warm color tone again. So let's bring the hue to somewhere around here and bring up the saturation. And then for the shadows, we can use a colder color tone again. So just like that and bring up the saturation. That looks wonderful. Perfect. So we're pretty much done with the raw adjustments. Now let's do the time blending. For that, we want to select both our raw files down here and click on open objects. We now have our two raw files opened in separate files in Photoshop. I'm going to drag the nighttime shot over to the sunset shot like this. And now comes the first problem. Since I was actually not planning on doing a time blend shot like this, the images aren't aligned perfectly. Like those two images were shot from completely different perspectives and focal lengths. So to fix that problem, all we need to do is to select both layers. Then we are going to edit and choose auto align layers and just click OK. You can see Photoshop is doing a decent job at aligning those layers. It is far from perfect, but I think no one will notice this. So after aligning those two layers, we need to crop the image. Let's see. Now, when I zoom in a little bit, you can actually see the difference in the positioning of those two layers. However, I think we can work around that. So with this being our base image, how do we get the lights of the nighttime shots on top of it? That is pretty easy. Simply activate that nighttime scene and we want to change the blending mode from normal to lighten. 
This works pretty good as you can see, but there's also areas in the sky which are now included. That's because those parts are brighter in the nighttime shot than they are in the sunset image. We can fix that quite easily. All I want to do is to create a black layer mask on this nighttime layer. So I'm holding down the Alt key and click the layer mask icon. And then let's grab the brush by pressing B. Set the foreground color to white. And what I'm doing now is to just brush over all the areas where I want to have the light introduced into this image. Just like that. And at this point, I would say it's pretty hard to figure out that those two images aren't perfectly aligned. I think we can tweak it some more, however, by moving it around manually. So what I want to do is to just see if I can find a spot which is more fitting for the main part of the image right here in the center. As I just moved it down a few pixels, it looks way, way, way better. I think it's actually perfectly fitting. So that's great. And all that's left to do from this point on is to do some final editing since we're done with the time blending. I do want to make the scene a little warmer and usually I'm going to use the photo filter adjustment layer for that right here. Right away, this makes the whole scene warmer. I think that's a bit too much, so we want to make use of the layer mask. However, I want to bring up the density a notch. All right. So with the layer mask selected, I'm grabbing the gradient tool by pressing G. And you can see I set it up going from black to transparent. So I want to mask out the top part of the sky. So I'm going to just create a gradient like that on the layer mask. That's looking pretty good. And I also don't want the foreground to be that warm. So I'm going to create another gradient going up from the foreground like this. Okay. And now we have targeted the portion of the sky which you want to warm it up with just a bunch of gradients. That looks great. Then I do want to add some autumn glow. So for that, let's merge everything hitting Ctrl Shift Alt E. And let's head into Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. I'm usually going with a radius around 30 pixel. Hit OK. And let's go to Edit, Fade Gaussian Blur change the blending mode to lighten and bring down the opacity. Now that is looking pretty good like this. Let's hit OK. And here's a cool trick. I want this glow effect to only be on the bright parts of this image. So instead of using a layer mask, I can simply right click on this layer, go into the blending options and using this slider down here, we can just make this happen. I'm going to hold on the Alt key while I'm clicking on this pin and dragging it up. This way I'm masking out the darker parts of this Autumn Glow layer, so only the brighter parts will have this glow effect added on top. Just like this. Wonderful. Now let's make the sky a little more dramatic. I'm going to create another adjustments layer, this time I'm choosing levels. And with the layer mask selected one more time, I'm going to the select menu and here we're choosing sky. With the sky selection active, I'm going to hit shift control I to invert the selection, click on the layer mask of the levels layer, hit shift F5 and choose black. Because we only want to change the sky with that levels adjustment layer. And all I want to do now is to bring in some contrast by bringing up the black point. Just like this. You can further play around here a little bit. All right. And at this point, all that's left to do is to once more merge everything, hitting Control Shift Alt E. And then I want to get rid of that leftover fence railing down here. And we are done editing this time blend image. I hope this Photoshop tutorial was interesting and helpful of course if you have any questions left feel free to ask in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video